Hello everyone, my name is Tracy. I am a uh, friend and team member of Tamara's team and she knew I was doing a buffet and she had asked me to give a little extra information to add on the paperwork page for you guys. So if you watch the first video, <laughs> uh, and that is how I roll. It is 100% me, I never edit or check my videos, they are just, this is how I roll. Uh, that one was designed for customers and it was, uh, I, I had mentioned to a few of my customers, some of them were new, uh, that we were doing a card buffet for Christmas this year because this is the first Christmas card we had made. The previous classes had been um, product included, so they were specific sweets for you. Did the he's the man, he, you know, so I didn't have any Christmas cards yet. So I got some weird looks like, we're doing a buffet? What do you mean? So some had been, some had not been. So I thought, I'm going to make a quick little video just so that when people are trying to figure out if they're going to sign up for this or not, they have some idea what they're getting into to make sure, one, they know what that it's right for them, but two, they can sort of prep for the night and say, oh, okay, maybe I'll have a little look here and figure what cards I need and, and decide what I'm doing first. So this was the poster I put in my my newsletter that they can respond to, and I will take it to my, I have a ladies' night tomorrow and a, an event next weekend, and I will take it everywhere I go <laughs> until then, just so people have an idea if they want to get in on a buffet. Buffets can be run numerous different ways. They can, whatever works for you as a demo. Um, Sometimes, and I think that's maybe how they started, was back in the day when everybody was doing stamp of stacks and was cutting and prepping for like in-home classes and you'd have like a stack of bases and pieces and stuff to make this card and a stack of bases and pieces to make this card. And then you would end up with leftovers after your class. So then, I don't know, six months of leftovers, all of a sudden you have a buffet and you can put all of those different card parts, you know, for each card in a bin and say, okay, fill your boots. Um, because I haven't, as I mentioned, I haven't made any Christmas card yet, and my last classes have been very specific. You pick a bundle, you get a little card package that has all your pieces in it, and I make, I usually make one extra package, but I don't make a ton of extra supplies, so I didn't have any leftovers. So what, I'm do, what I do, and I've done in the past as well, is I've designed this specifically for this buffet. So you will have noticed in the customer video, I showed all the different cards. I had a variety of... Um, cards that come from it so that could you could have less variety or more variety I guess that's up to you based on whether you want to design from scratch I mean you could do this with four different cards and that would still work um, a couple tips though that, that of, of like things I've learned as I went along as you're designing and you're making your bins move this out of the way for a second so I'm making this bin for happy holiday and I did um, take some stuff out of here to use so I'm just going to really quickly put them back in. So I'm going to use this, um, and I still haven't put them back on my desk. Okay, so let's let's just pretend I know what I'm doing. Here we go. So there would actually be blocks in here as well. So as I'm designing this card, and I've decided, okay, here's my card. I want to stamp here. I want to stamp here. I want to do this. As I'm going, um, I put an extra red one in here, even though I didn't use it. You could also stamp the hat in red. I just happened to like the way it looked in black. So as I make this card, I put everything for this card in this bin. Now, at this point, I haven't cut the paper or anything. I've just, here's all the stamp sets I've used, here's the colors I've used, here's the blocks I've used. I put this in. I close it up, and you'll see it better on the next bin. And then I go to my next card. So this card, it's here just to grab it really quickly. This, this bin, and it's just fluke, it was the one on the top, um, is for the snowman. So I made this card, and yeah, there's a couple spare pieces in it. But in order to make this card, what I needed was this folder. I do have some retired black rhinestones. If not, I would just take um, a Stampin' Blends and the clear rhinestones and color them, but I haven't had leftovers of the other ones. So I would take this. I know I used my Ring with Nature set. I used these two stamp pads. Again, I've taken all my blocks out. I used this brush, and then I always have like spare pieces. So, so this is what I use for this card, right? So I finish. And I put my little leftover pieces and stuff in here. And then I, I finish this card and I move on to the next one. And the reason I do this is because if not, let's face it, I would likely end up with six cards that are all stamped in Evening Evergreen. Because I love Evening Evergreen as a color. Or real red. But the truth of the matter is I have two Evening Evergreen stamp pads. So I don't want to have the same stamp pad used for six cards unless I have six of them. Because it means somebody would have to go to this bin and take, you know, something out of it to make their card. Which means the next time somebody goes to this bin, it's 
something's going to be missing. So the less mixing and matching, the better. So as I did this, so I made this card first, and I used the Evening Evergreen. So then I was going to use it, of course, on the second card. But when I went to this card, I just made a couple little shifts and made these trees so that the darkest tree here is now Garden Green. So this ink is Garden Green. So now I'm using a different stamp pad. Um, I try to make it so that I don't use the same sentiment sets and stuff. Again, same reason. Just so that when somebody goes to make their card and they're like, well, where's the sentiment? Um, this one kind of breaks the rule because, like I said, it's an awesome set. So this one will likely end up at the front of the classroom in like sort of the communal area because there's just so many things you can use out of this one. Now, if I have a couple other sets when I'm as I'm finally packing up and getting ready to go, if I look and I have another set that has like the long skinny greetings, I might throw that one in here and just keep this at the communal. It really all depends on what you have for supplies yourself. But as a rule, try not to duplicate supplies so they don't have to get moved around so you're not constantly trying to look for them. The other thing I do is, so once I've done this, um, it's not, it's not going to match this box, but let's pretend. So once I've done this, right, so I've got all my cards designed. I haven't cut everything because I don't actually cut until I start getting RSVPs. Because there is a difference in how much you need to cut if you have five people respond to a class versus ten. I can, I can cut a whole bunch of extra paper, and it doesn't matter to me because I have sort of a private group of friends who craft with me. I give them all the leftovers to use as their starting point. They mix and match, do whatever they want. I have a Christmas craft sale a couple weeks after this event. So anything that doesn't get put together, I'm just going to put together and sell it at the craft sale. If it was earlier in the season or these were generic cards, I could um, make lots of extras and have them like for later for a buffet or keep them for something else. But because these are Christmas and a lot of these sets are going to be retired before next Christmas, um, whatever I make as extra, I'm just, I have like already designated uses for. But I don't want to prep a ton of stuff if I don't have to. So I kind of wait for the RSVPs to come in, but I get all the I get all the samples made so I can make the pictures and I make these bids up. And then because I know between the time I design the cards and the time the class actually happens, I'm going to need to use stuff in here. I make these little um, lists. I, I like lists. So bin number one is called Pretty Forest. That was this card. And I write down everything I need. So in this case, I need the trees for sale stamp set and the tree lot dies. And whether I've pre-cut all of these or not, I'm still gonna put the dies in. Uh, in the case of this card, there is three different colors. And so I will likely just cut strips of them um, so that people can cut out whatever color trees they want. Now I will pre-cut a whole bunch of these, the snow in the different sizes with the adhesive back on it. It says here, with adhesive back on it. I will pre-cut a whole bunch of that and then I'll probably have some extra strips just in case we have, you know, people rip them accidentally or whatever. I want people to be happy, so I tend to always have spares so nobody has to use something they, you know, dropped an ink pad on or whatever. I will pre-cut those ones, though, because they're all white. But the, the trees behind, if you want to make your bigger trees the darker ones, yeah, whatever. Um, I probably will have a bunch pre-cut, but um, then I'll just have strips. Um, this is the decorative circle punch cut in half. So I will put the decorative circle punch in, and I'll have some extra red cardstock, but I will have pre-made a bunch of these, right? So everything that I've done and everything that I put in there and everything that I need, I'm writing on this list, including envelopes, because it's very easy to forget envelopes. Um, I'm putting the blocks I need in here. Oops, sorry, I'm putting the blocks I need in here. Now I do this because as soon as I'm done, I'm like, okay, everything's good. Now I put the bins off to the side and then I start pilfering them as I go. But when it comes time to actually get ready for the class, this list is in the bin. So when I go to pack it back up again, or when I go to cut, I know, okay, so I have a, a basic white landscape base. I have 10 people responded, so I'm making 30 white landscape bases. I'm going to make 30, or 30 of these, 30 of these, whatever. So as I go through, I'm going through my list. I'm making sure that these are put back in, just so I don't forget anything. The communal stuff, um, I will probably make, I have a sort of a separate list I never thought to grab. Um, I have a separate list that just sort of tells me at each event what do I need to bring so I don't forget anything. Um, it includes <laughs> the snacks because I like snacks. I make table treats. Um, the So if, like on here this says die cut machine and the one for the peekaboo Christmas, <clears throat> at the bottom of that one it will say embossing machine because I want to make sure that I remember that I they're good, they have an option of three different plates here that they can emboss. So I want to make sure I bring the 
the gray plate for embossing, not just the die cutting. If, if I was doing this on a smaller scale and there was hardly any die cutting or embossing, which if you know me, you're laughing right now because you know how much I love my die cutting, um, I might only bring one machine. In this case, because it's, there's die cutting and embossing, I will bring two machines and two setups, but I want to make sure I bring the gray plate, right? So I might have a separate list that says, you know, die cut machine, gray plates. Um, I probably will bring extra adhesive sheets just in case. Um, I'm going to bring some extra tools if I need or whatever. So any of the communal stuff I'll have on kind of a separate sheet. But for each project, I will have a very specific list so that I don't forget anything. I went to a home party once for somebody's birthday. We made three different cards. I forgot the card bases for one of the three cards. So they basically at the class, at the like party, which was lots of fun, made two and a half cards. Luckily, I worked for the husband of the lady who was having the party. And the next day at work, I gave him the bases, which he took to her and she gave to all her friends. But it was kind of embarrassing and certainly not how you wanted them to leave the class with, you know, I forgot a key thing. So ever since then, I have been extra cautious. So that's my Christmas buffet. That's what I do. I'm sure there are many ways to do it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, this is a great site for sharing information, getting ideas, clarifying things, whatever you need. Um, I'm happy to help. I'm sure there are different versions of doing it. So if anybody else has any good ideas or any don't forget to, or here's, a, here's what worked for me, by all means, add them into the comments because that's how we help each other. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good luck with your crafting. I hope you have successful buffets.